Greetings everyone, Justin here from Coal Legion Gaming. Welcome to video 2, episode 2 of a short how-to series on the game system of Bolt Action. If you haven't seen the first one, jump on back, check out the intro video. That one basically just covers what the game's all about, some of the mechanics um, dealing with the activation dice and some of the special rules that the, the system allows you to do. This video here, as I said, is the second one. This one is going to cover everything we need to know about movement. I say everything, it's going to cover 99% of most of it. Um, there's some specialty stuff when we get into motorbikes and bicycles and that kind of stuff that I'm not going to cover really until the fifth video when I wrap it up with some special rules uh, for units and weapon systems and that kind of things. But this video will cover, again, 99% of the things you need to know for movement. Now I've broken it down uh, by activation dice. Instead of taking an infantry and show you what you can do with an advance and a run, I'm going to go through uh, advance on everything. So we're going to cover infantry, we're going to cover artillery, we're going to cover all the different vehicles for advancing what you can and can't do, what that uh, that order allows you to do. Um, and then we're going to go into and do the same exact thing for run, wrap it up with some odds and ends things that are not covered uh, generally by either category. and. Yeah, that's basically it. This one's going to be kind of quick and easy, just covering movement. Uh, so it's pretty self-explanatory. So uh, stand by. We're going to get into this. Now, one thing I do want to state, um, and you're going to hear me state it again in the shooting video, one of the rules with bolt action is you are not allowed to pre-measure. So that will cover in movement. If you think that you want to get up to a fence line or a wall, you can't pre-measure to determine if you need an advance or a run. You got to give it your best guess. If you don't feel you're going to make it, you're going to have to do a run, which again, we'll get into the restrictions of what you can and can't do with each order. Uh, but that is very important because you may fall short and leave yourself out in the open. So no pre-measuring allowed, uh, but let's get right into it and start talking about advancing. Okay, so here we have a standard four by four table set up. I'll lift this up so you can get a better view. Um, don't mind some of the unpainted buildings. I'm still working on them. Um, but again, this is a standard 4x4, which is what we play our smaller games on. Uh, you see I have several different types of terrain laid out. Um, I have some uh, woods here as area terrain. Got some hedges, some fences, some buildings. Um, it's always good before you play your opponent to determine exactly how you want to play certain area. As far as those woods, they can just be light woods and area terrain, uh, giving light cover. They could give you uh, dense terrain. Uh, so it's always good to figure out how you want to play it. And when we're talking about movement, we're on page 45 of the rule book. Uh, in that chapter, there is a nice table that kind of determines what you can do. Real quick, easy guide referencing infantry, artillery vehicles. Can they run? Can they advance? What can they do on each type of terrain? So real quick, easy reference chart. But what we're going to focus on is we have an infantry squad right here that just came on the table last turn. And they are going to work on advancing up through that field. So, uh, as I said, we're going to first deal with advancing when it comes to infantry. So we're going to say that we have pulled one of our dice and we're going to put it on advance. So... We're also going to, for the purposes of this, if you remember, if you've watched video one, dealing with pin markers, we're going to say that they have one pin on them. Since they are a veteran unit, they are a motivation of 10. Before they can take any action to be able to advance, they would roll 2d6. Now they rolled an 8, so they would be good to go. One pin would come off. If they have not passed it, then they would just go down, but... We're going to say that they're going to advance because that's the whole purpose of this video is to show movement. I uh, just wanted to give that little fresh reminder that your pins will affect the, whether any type of order activation that they take. So they're good to go. They're motivated. They only took one pin, so they're good. So on an advance, <clears throat> any infantry can move up to six inches. At an advance, they are allowed to go over... Uh, any type of obstacles and rough terrain. They cannot move through impassable terrain if we have a massive cliff here or anything that you deem is impassable, they would not be able to move through. 
They can also not move into buildings on an advance that will be covered under a run. They can move up to the building to use it as cover, but they cannot advance into the building. And again, we'll cover that. So any type of obstacles, if you have to get them into this field, you can only use an advance. You cannot use a run. Again, we'll cover that in a second. So advance, you are allowed to go over obstacles and rough terrains. Uh, you are also allowed to move through infantry and artillery. So if they were back further and we had another infantry line against this tree or against this fence line here, you can move through them. Same with artillery. As long as you end up within, remember, you have to be an inch away from another unit. So as long as they would end up an inch away from wherever that unit is, they're good. Now, if there was a vehicle here, they cannot move up and over in a vehicle. They would have to move around. Um, but infantry, artillery, they can move straight through. Um, and the perk with advancing infantry is you can still shoot after the fact. And again, we will cover that when we get into the shooting video, which will be the next video. Um, but advancing does allow you to shoot. Um, so there's a penalty, but you can still do that move and shoot support because obviously they're not spending their entire focus on bomb rushing to a building or a fence or whatever the case may be. Um, so that kind of covers a little bit of the rules. So let's get into it. So on an advance, any infantry can move six inches. So if we were going to advance these guys into here, they can move over obstacles. So we're just going to move them up our six inches. And I don't have enough room, so I'll put them there. So they've advanced up. <clears throat> now they must all still stay within an inch. Unit cohesion of another guy, so they're all within an inch. If there's again, if there's another unit here, this guy wouldn't be able to stop here because he would now be within an inch of another unit, same as probably this guy here. So that's where it's important. And remember, you cannot pre-measure, so you really have to determine what you can use, you may have to just move the guys in the front first and have these guys take the fence line or move them around because again, you can't run them because you're going over an obstacle. So in advance is that simple with infantry, they can move up to six inches. Now, again, if they were back here, quickly move them back and they wanted to advance over this way to get cover, they could advance up behind the building wherever the, the enemy may be seeing them from. But they are unable to move into that building this turn because they only use an advance. So again, very basic for infantry. Six inches in any direction. You can move through infantry and artillery. You must end within an inch unit cohesion and an inch away from all other units. Uh, you can move over obstacles and rough terrain and you cannot move through impossible or impassable terrain and buildings. So simple, quick, dirty for infantry. And we are going to move on next to talk a little bit about artillery. And again, this is a very another easy, quick procedure here. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about artillery here. Uh, here you will also see from right to left, you will see a medium howitzer, a medium machine gun. I know not artillery, I'll explain in a second, and a medium mortar. Anything as far as artillery or anything with the fixed keyword in the stat line cannot move on an advance. What you use an advance for is these items have a 45 degree arch arc that they can fire out of their firing lane basically. Same thing for any type of artillery, same thing for any type of mortar. If you want to fire at something outside of their arc, say you got a target way out here to the right this machine goes on to fire. You can use an advance to pivot them on the spot, any direction, and then they can still fire. They cannot move <clears throat> with an advance. And what that simulates, basically for fixed weapons or even, you know, you get into the artillery pieces, is on an advance, they're basically rotating that arc of fire to be to be able to engage a target out of out of their cone. Obviously, they're still going to be able to put shots down, but they may not be as accurate because they had to move. We're going to use the run to advance them. Basically, again, what that simulates is them breaking down the machine gun, them breaking down the mortar, these guys picking up the arms and, and wheeling this thing into place 
they're not going to be able to fire because they spent that entire turn getting a, a, a better position to be able to lay down fire. So it's as simple as that. On an advance, artillery, fixed infantry, anything of that nature uh, can rotate in place to be able to still fire. Um, so that's basically it for an advance on them. It's, it's As I said, it's very simple, very easy to remember. All right, guys, now we're going to cover vehicles here. And it's broken down again into the three cat subcategories of vehicles, dealing with tracked, wheeled, and half-tracked. And we're going to go through each of them, uh, dealing with the different situations here. Um, so we're going to start first with tracked. We have a simple stug in front of us. A tracked is able to move nine inches and make up to one 90-degree pivot at any time. So, simple as that. They have a nine-inch movement raise or movement range. So they can move up to nine inches. Um, if, say, we want them to move to the left here, they can make up to 190 degree pivot and then move. That pivot can happen at any time and it's up to 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be that much. It doesn't, it cannot be more than that. So if I want to move him up, say six inches, pivot him, or up, I'm sorry, three inches, pivot him and then move him the additional six. You can do that anytime during that move, even at the very end, you can pivot them up to 90 degrees. It's as simple as that for tracked. Now for wheeled, because obviously they are a little bit more versatile, they can move up to 12 inches and take up to two 90s or 180 at once. So they have a much greater movement range of 12. And again, you can move them any distance make up to one pivot, move them there additional six, make up to one pivot, or move them up 12 and make one complete 180 in any time you want. Uh, so again, very basic for that. Dealing with half track, say if this was a half track vehicle, they kind of meet in the middle. They can only move up to nine inches, but you can still make that two 90 degree turns at any time. So half track is kind of that in, in between, um, of a tract and a wheel. So again, nine inches and up to 290. So if we're talking about the type of terrain that they can go through, and again, there's a real nice, uh, easy chart in the book um, that kind of covers everything, but I want to touch base on just a few things here real quick. So dealing with rough ground, say if we were to say that the tree area terrain there, woodline, is considered rough ground. Tract and half tract are okay to move through it with no penalties. If it's wheeled, it cannot. Simple as that. Um, and again, depending what you determine as rough ground, you may you may declare that as rough, you may declare it as extremely rough, and make up and say that basically only fully track can go through it. But if it's rough ground, track and half track are good to go. Wheeled or not. If it's an obstacle, say if we were trying to go back over that fence line over there, uh, tracked and half tracked can. As long as you are not determining something as an anti-tank vehicle, if you would have dragon's teeth out here, um, or anything that you put down to mean an anti-tank obstacle, nothing can drive over it. Wheeled, of course, still cannot drive over any type of obstacles. Um, but again, you got to determine how you want to play the terrain before you actually get into it. Now, one other thing we're going to cover here about vehicles is... Yes, we can have these guys move up here, but there's a perfectly good road right next door here. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into moving every single vehicle, but the basis of roads is if you have a vehicle moving completely down the road, so if this was making its full 12 inches down the road here, you're actually able to move twice the distance. So tracked and, and uh, half tracked will be able to move 18 inches. Wheeled vehicles will be able to move 24 as long as your movement is completely on the road. <coughs> Excuse me. Now where that comes into play is you can move him down so far to the intersection there. He can make his pivots and continue on down the roads. As long as the movement is completely on the road, as soon as you come off the road, it has to stop. Uh, you cannot move any further than that. So that's a nice little park with vehicles. Um, that's why if you're playing, you want to put an anti-tank gun down the end of the street, you can pretty much guarantee a vehicle is going to be cruising through there. Uh, but if you need to get to the other side of the table very quickly, um, you know, you're now moving at an advance uh, at 24 inches 
or a run, obviously, and we'll get into that, you can really get across the board pretty quickly. So roads are good to go for vehicles. They do not give, obviously, infantry or artillery any type of benefit. Okay, now that that covers the basics of advancing, let's get talking about the other option you can do with an activation dice, which is running. So here we have a infantry group ready to make a run action. So obviously you would have the activation dice, you would get one pulled, you would turn it to run. Simple as that. Say so I'm giving them a run action. Now for running for infantry, it's very easy. They can move up to 12 inches. For the most part, for talking about everything, the difference between advance and run is most of the time double the range. But again, it's always good to look. So for infantry, it's 12 inches. The important key notes here is they cannot shoot after they run. They cannot move through rough uh, terrain or over obstacles. Uh, you can move around them, as we'll show you here in a second. And they can then enter a building uh, as long as every infantry model or every model in that unit is within one inch of the building. And one model has to be within one inch of an opening in that building, which we'll show you here in a little bit. So it's basically that simple. Infantry will get a 12 inch move. Again, you can't move them this way because we're acting this as an obstacle. You can move around. So they could basically come up and around to here and then you would move each model, which we won't get into the tediousness of it here for the video, but basically they'd be able to move up and around uh, the obstacle itself. Now say if we want to move them into the building, they're pretty much all going to be within 12 inches. So you would just move them, they're 12 inches up and around. Now, again, for quickness, we're going to say they all get in and around. Now that they're within the one inch of the building, <clears throat> they would actually then be placed inside of the building. And we will cover exactly how to shoot out of buildings and how cover and all that works. And, in the buildings, uh, most likely, um, obviously a lot of it will be covered in a shooting phase, but then we'll touch up with some of the stuff in a fifth video. But basically they all go in. Now, how you play buildings again is up to you. The rules are kind of vague on that where it says that you basically just put them off the table and say they're in that building and so many guys can fire in. If you want to play it that they must be able to all fit in there so you're not squeezing a 10 man squad into an outhouse. Um, again, however you're playing it friendly um, determines it the tournaments are going to follow the, 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 the rules in the book, but again, they may amend them a little bit if you want. But basically, you would, you would just fit all these guys into the building. And on a run turn, they have now moved into that building, and they're in there for the next turn. So again, real simple, real short with infantry. They can move up to 12 inches. Uh, you do not have to move them the full 12 inches, but they can move up to the 12 inches. They cannot go over obstacles. You can use run to enter buildings. Uh, you cannot shoot afterwards, so that's kind of used as a dash to get to a better area for cover, a uh, better field of fire for next turn, whatever it may be. Uh, but they cannot fire that turn. So that's basically it for infantry, and we'll move on to artillery here next. So here we are back to looking at these three similar models, familiar models. We have the medium artillery, medium mortar, medium machine gun. Um, Again, kind of categorizing that in talking about artillery just because it is a fixed weapon. Uh, but the rules on artillery are very simple. If it is a light and medium, again, which all three of these are, I don't have any heavies, they can move up to six inches by using a run. So anywhere they want, up to six inches. Um, obviously, they can't move any further than that. I don't know why you would want to move them any less than that, but you can move them less. Um, but if you're using it as a run to move them inch over so they get in the cover, it still counts it as a run because you have moved them. Um, anything that is categorized as heavy, super heavy, or if this crew was reduced down to one crewman because they've taken heavy hits, you can only move that piece if it is towed. So even if this was a light gun, anti-tank gun, if it's down to one crew, one crewman's not going to be able to move uh, that anti-tank gun. It has to be towed. Um, so that's pretty simple for artillery. Now, artillery cannot move through rough ground. However, there's a nice little asterisk by it on page 47 in the chart. 
if you have deployed it into that ground to start, then it can be in that rough ground, but you cannot move it into the rough ground in itself. Same thing as an obstacle. It cannot move over an obstacle. It cannot be placed into a building or moved into a building, I should say, unless, again, you have started it in the building. Now, that seems a little crazy to me it, um, to be able to move an entire artillery piece. And we'll discuss a little bit more when we get into special rules. Um, but, you know, if you have a small anti-tank gun and they've hiked it into that building, then it can start in an area. It just cannot be moved into actually once the game has started. So that also means it cannot be moved out of. So if you put it into a building, it is in there for the duration of the game until it's assaulted, killed, or that building comes down on it. All right, now we're gonna talk about vehicles. Again, this is very simple stuff. So we're gonna say we have a track stog here. We're gonna say this transport truck is a half track just for the sake of this video. And we got a fully wheeled vehicle. So for tracked, now this is important um, when we're talking about infantry we were saying they can run they can run up to 12 inches they can run any distance between that vehicles if you're putting them at a run move they must move more than what their advance rate is so for a tracked vehicle a tracked vehicle must move more than nine inches and it can move up to eight inches with no changes in its direction so it loses its pivot and it can move in a straight line up to 18 inches but more than nine wheeled vehicles they can uh they must move more than their normal 12 inches in advance and they can move up to the 24 inches and they still get one pivot so they can still make that pivot anywhere in it uh, but they must move more than 12 up to 24. again the half track meets in the middle it must move more than nine can move up to 18 and still make that 190 degree pivot so simple as that again it just doubles the movement from an advance, they must move more than an advance if you're giving them a run. Um, track loses its pivot because it only had one. The other two go down to 190 degree pivot. Uh, again, if they're on the road, it's double that. So um, that comes into play at, at 36 for a track, 48 and 36. Um, so again, they have a lot of a lot of movement if they're on the road. Um, some of the other things I want to cover here a little bit dealing with special stats and special rules. Again, I'm gonna cover the majority of them in, in video five, but I wanna to touch on a bit few here because it specifically deals with movement. The first one is dealing with reverse moves when it comes to vehicles. A vehicle, if it needs to fall back for whatever reason, can move half of its advanced distance. So, um, just falling straight back, no pivot, it just, it just falls back. So, four and a half, four and a half, six inches back. Um, now, if something has the special rule of Reese, like this vehicle does, it is considered a Reese vehicle, it can still move its full movement and it still can make its pivots to reverse. Um, then there's another special rule that I'll say in the stat line, if it's considered like a super light tank, it'll say that it can still make a run at the reverse. So if that's the case, it, it still runs its full rate reverse back. Um, and again, only certain vehicles have that. You have to look at your stat lines. Uh, same thing, some vehicles will have a stat line that will say slow. If it's, an, if it's a slow vehicle, it's an advance of 6 inches and a run of 12. So those are like your super heavy tanks that were mainly meant as, I think like the Cromwell has it, or the Cruiser maybe, I think it's Cromwell, um, that it's meant to basically be an infantry support tank. So it's meant to stay with the infantry, not gun out in advance. So again, that will say it in the stat lines. Uh, anytime it is dealing with those special rules and again we'll touch base on on the uh, video five with them but I just wanted to, to say it's important to look at your army list look in the look in the stat line see if you have any specialty of what you can do with them um, I want to touch base on one more thing here I'm going to switch the table up and I want to touch base uh, dealing with transports a little bit because uh, we discussed movement with them that most of them it's just considered a wheeled truck but I want to deal with mounting and dismounting because that is something that happens in the movement phase. So we're going to set up the table and discuss that here next. All right, we're going to wrap this up by talking a little bit about transports pertaining mainly to uh, the movement phase in itself. So obviously the role of a transport is to be able to move troops quickly to and from the board um, wherever you may want to move them to. Now, 
this vehicle as a transport will have its own separate activation dice. So if you have guys inside the transport, there's two dice, one for the guys in, one for the actual truck. And it's important to uh, disseminate that because um, if guys are in the vehicle, and if you're not moving them, you're still gonna have a dice in the bag. You're just gonna have to give them a down order. But one of the things I want to say real quick about vehicles are, especially a transport, actually only a transport, their sole purpose is to move troops to and from wherever they need to be. So if you do not have any troops in that transport, you can keep the transport on the table. Some transports have uh, weapons that can be passenger fired or can actually be fired by the crew driving the transport. Um, and again, I'll specifically say that. But if you have an empty transport truck, you can keep this on the table. However, it must always at the end of its movement phase be closer to a friendly model than an enemy model. If at any time it becomes closer to an enemy model than an, a friendly model, it is automatically destroyed. Basically, it's the truck driver says, this ain't my job, and he turns tail and he gets out of there and you lose that truck. So it's important to, to say that. It's very important to make sure you can't drive this thing across the table and hold it on an objective um, just to take cannon fodder. It's automatically going to be gone. All right, so that's important. So we're going to talk a little bit about mount mounting a transport. <clears throat> mounting is a little more stricter, I guess you can say, than dismounting. Um, so we're going to cover this a little bit here, and then we'll talk about actually dismounting the transport. Okay, so mounting and transport. First, let me start by saying that each transport will have in its stat line exactly how many models it can carry. You cannot exceed that many models. Simple as that. You can also start your infantry unit in that transport at the start of the game, and then you can deploy that transport on the table, or you can hold it off in reserves, but you can easily just put them on a the table to start. Now, mounting a transport is very easy. So an infantry unit cannot mount a transport that has advanced or run that turn. It must have stayed stationary. It can, however, mount a transport that was giving a down order uh, for whatever reason. If a vehicle was moving and then whatever the case may be, got shot at and went to a down, then an infantry unit could uh, mount into those. Similarly, a unit or a transport cannot move once a unit has mounted that turn. It basically takes its entire turn making sure that everybody's getting into the vehicle. So it's as simple as that. Now, to actually mount an infantry unit, um, you must give the infantry unit a run order, the same as you would for entering a building, which gives them a 12 inch distance. At that time, <clears throat> you would move all of them, they're 12 inches. So all of these guys are good to go within 12 inches. They would get around the truck, same as a building. So we're just gonna say, for giggles that they're all there. We've measured every one. They're now all within one inch of the vehicle. They would then just enter that vehicle. You take the troops off the table. You say, hey, they're in there. I know some people that play that will put the NCO or something on top of the vehicle just so they know who's actually in there. Um, if, say, for whatever reason, one guy was lagging way behind and he was out of a two inch range of that, or one inch range, I'm sorry, of that vehicle when it moves, that unit cannot mount that vehicle. All models must be within one inches. Uh, basically, just simplifies it a little bit easier so you're not figuring out half the units are in there, half not when it comes to shooting. They all must reach the vehicle and they all must mount that turn. So that's it as far as mounting a transport. Again, the vehicle cannot move before or after an infantry model or infantry unit has mounted that transport. Okay, now we're gonna cover dismounting. Uh, first I wanna say, again, I'm not covering all the rules for transports and I'm not cover I know I'm skipping over a lot of rules here. Um, feel free to comment down in the comment sections with anything I may be missing you feel is important. Again, I'm not trying to get into the weeds with these videos on every single rule. Hopefully, if you like what you see, you're going to get the rule book and read. I'm just trying to give you a very basic overview of them. Um, so there's some specific rules with infantry units in a transport and what they can and can't do as far as receiving orders. Obviously, they can't fire. They can't be uh, influenced by snap two. So there's, a, there's kind of a whole lot of in the weed stuff I'm not getting into. The one thing I do want to say that when a unit is aboard that transport, uh, you pull their die, you can basically give them a down order. Or you can actually give them a rally. So if you got a unit that was severely pinned and you wanted to get them out of there, you put them in the truck, they rally while they're in the truck movement, um, and that works as normal. 
So as far as dismounting, dismounting is a lot easier than mounting. So if we said that all these guys were in here, the vehicle can move at an advance before a unit dismounts. It cannot run. Um, basically, it's moving slowly. It gets to where it needs to be. It stops. They all hop out. Uh, so if a unit or if a, a vehicle has advanced, they can still dismount. As far as dismounting for infantry goes, that you can then give them an advance or run order. So say if they are all in this truck and this truck moves to here. Now this infantry unit you want out, you can give them a run or an advance out of the vehicle and it works as normal. You measure from the vehicle and you move them, there's six or 12 inches, whatever you've given them. Uh, now you cannot use a dismount order to assault and to uh, combat. Um, so they'd have to dismount and then use the next turn to assault, which they'd probably get shot up. So it's not really the greatest idea. But um, that is important to note that they can't drive this vehicle right up next to an enemy unit, say if that was an enemy unit, and then everybody jumps out and quick assaults them. Uh, that's not allowed. But very easy from dismounting from a transport. The transport can uh, be either stationary or given an advance. And then the guys jump out. It is important to note that if these guys jump out this and this vehicle has not moved, and you still have to die for it, it can then move normally and get out of there or move up as support if it has a weapon that can still be fired on it. Again, as long as you keep that nearest to an, uh, a friendly unit, not a enemy model. Now, some final notes I want to touch with transports are times that you're actually forced to dismount the truck when you don't want to. Um, there's a couple different times that could happen. If you have an enemy unit that is assaulting the vehicle, the unit inside that vehicle, that transport, cannot uh, cannot do in a defensive fire. All they're doing that turn is they would basically dismount the vehicle and prepare to fight that assault in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They would still get to strike back after the attacking unit has struck, uh, but they wouldn't get to the defensive fire, so you would, you would be forced to dismount at that time. Uh, also, if the vehicle is immobilized uh, for whatever reason by enemy fire, you would be forced to dismount the transport. There's no sense in being in a transport that's a sitting duck and can't move, so they would dismount at that time. If the v transport vehicle is destroyed while the units are in there, the unit would take D6 hits. So you roll to see how many hits they take, you roll the damage as normal, um, and then any survivors are forced to immediately dismount. So there are a few times when um, you may be forced to dismount when you're not ready to, um, and it's it's pretty simple. Those rules for all those transports start on page uh, 114 in the book, dealing under the vehicles. Um, again, there's some stuff there for transports we didn't touch bases on. I just wanted to cover what really mattered for moving, um, for dismounting and all of those things. So. Uh, that's basically it on the movement. I'm going to do a little bit of a wrap up here and we should be good. All right, everybody. So that wraps up our real quick, short, easy video on how to move, dealing with advance and run with the different types um, of infantry, vehicles, uh, artillery, things of that nature. Again, I can't stress how important it is to discuss with your opponent before you play dealing with terrain and how, how you actually want to play it. Um, because it will affect both movement and shooting throughout the game. So, you know, an area terrain of woods, how, how do you guys play that? Do you play it as rough? Do you play it as it's, it's super dense jungle and can't get through? Um, buildings, we didn't really get into it a whole lot, but uh, Warlord Games and some other companies make some nice destroyed looking buildings. You could play those as not an actual building and just play it as area terrain, rough terrain, so you don't have to run to, to get into, but you still get the coverage of buildings, or you may just get a, a hard cover save. So it's important to know all of that before you actually start rolling dice so you don't have those arguments in between. Um, again, this video was very basic, very easy. I didn't get into all the details, so please feel free again to comment on anything um, that you may be confused on or that I may have missed. The next video is going to be covering shooting, which is obviously the meat and potatoes of the game. You know, how do you kill the enemy? How do you win the game? So that one may be a little bit longer. And again, I'll lay out some different scenarios with some things that may come up. But I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. I hope you're learning some stuff. Um, not just here to listen to me babble. But uh, I hope you stay tuned. Again, the next one will be posting very shortly. Please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Again, dealing with shooting. So thanks for watching and happy gaming.